Infinity. I've been told it's beautiful, but I don't think it's anything special. But when you live like me, most things become quite ordinary. Life, death, tormented souls, it's all the same to me. Sometimes I wonder if anything will ever surprise me again. Sometimes I wonder if I even care. Stay out. Aw, oh, hey, you know I don't like that. What's your beef, anyway? I am not talking to you. Oh, promises, promises. So what's next on the list? What's next? The balcony. Why, are you gonna throw yourself over and join me? No, I'm having a cigarette. Great, you want a cigarette. What am I supposed to do? You can do whatever the hell you like. Just one. Then I can get on with this. Absolutely not. Right now, nothing exists except for me and this cigarette. I haven't taken any notes. I haven't taken any notes. No, the case list doesn't exist. Nothing exists until I finish this cigarette. No, nothing exists. No, I'm not doing that again. The kid can find her own damn loose change. Hey. What? Why the heck are you so mad? You honestly don't know. I have no idea. Typical. If you don't know, I'm sure as hell not going to tell you. Look, I'm sorry. Sorry for what? Um... Exactly. You done moping? Or do you want to grind your teeth some more? Christ, Joey. Can't you just leave it for one minute? Take another drag of that cigarette, darling. You get real ugly when you stop smoking. Oh? Is that right? Well... Ugly, am I? Take it easy, dear. It was just a little joke. A joke? Yeah. I'm a riot. Like today, when those pipes burst. Oh. <laughs> Wait, is, is that what's got you in such a guff? I got soaked, and you just laughed. What was I supposed to do? Give you a towel? It was cold and wet and slimy. <laughs> it wasn't funny. You should have seen the look on your face, the way you jumped up and down and ran in circles, squealing. <sighs> Still wasn't funny. If you say so. Okay, I'm finished. Let's get on with this. There's a few things we haven't checked, right? Yes, I've got the list right here. Well, let's check it. Every other case today has been a false alarm. Maybe this will be an easy night. Ugh. Every one of these leads has been a dead end. Just two more to go, and we can call it a night. This one looks promising. Residents have reported strange music on the promenade late at night. Nobody knows where it comes from. A development corporation has halted construction after a series of accidents. Probably nothing, but worth checking out. This one looks promising. Residents have reported str Nobody knows where it comes
got it. I guess I could take this along. I want to talk to you, Joey. What's the deal? Say cheese. Having fun? This is a little recording device. It's called a dictaphone. I've been using it to record my dreams. Testing, testing. Hello? Does my voice really sound like that? <clears throat> Gotta cut back on the cigarettes. Anyway, I've been having some extreme dreams lately, but I don't remember any of them. I get the strangest feeling that they're important, but I can't put my finger on why. I'm keeping this recorder next to my pillow so I can record what I remember as soon as I wake up. First entry, February 21st, is it? God, my head. I dreamed tonight. It's already fading away. I saw my mother. She was calling out to me and waving. She was smiling, and her face was bright. So bright. I see a child, seven or eight years old. She's surrounded by other children, but she's all alone. I call out to her, but she doesn't hear. Something is wrong. With me? With her? It's fading. I see a man in tattered clothes. He looks at me and screams. I look in a mirror and see a huge horned demon. For some reason, I'm not surprised. I'm on the Brooklyn Bridge staring at the seaport. I'm alone, strangely at peace. The water, it looks so cool and inviting. Suddenly I'm in the water, floating. I dreamt I was in a strange room. The walls are deep pink, and there are books and papers everywhere. Joey is behind me, trying to get my attention. I ignore him. I feel strangely good about it. I see Jack and Maria. They're far away, but I know it's them. I see his glasses and her bright red hair. I want to join them. I run to catch up. I almost get there, but I, I trip and fall. Maria turns to help me up, but it's not Maria. She's got red hair like Maria, but it's someone else. She says she's sorry. Then I wake up. I'm in a hospital room. There's a Chinese girl lying on the bed. I want to help her, but she doesn't want to be helped. Suddenly, I say a magic word, and her eyes widen with trust. I've made a friend, and yet I don't want her friendship. I run away. I'm on a fire escape. I'm talking with a man who wants to be my friend. Suddenly his face turns blue. He, he can't breathe. He dies. It's my fault. I could have stopped it. I'm in a huge house. I see gas lamps and electric lights. I look into a mirror and see an old woman. She reaches out of the mirror to grab me. I take her hand and hold it tight. Then I wake up. I'm on a train, speeding away into the night. Next to me is a man. I know nothing about him, yet I trust him. I think I love him. Then he disappears. What did I do wrong? I'm trapped. Trapped somewhere bright. I see my mother and a woman I don't recognize. I see Joey far away, calling out for me. We're fighting for our lives, but it's too late. The world goes dark. Ugh, I hate that dream. Come on, let's get out of here. Right behind you. Hmm. Looks like another bus, Joey. Yeah, maybe. Or maybe not. Wait, you hear that? I think so. Let's get closer.
looks like our evening might not be a total wash after all. Say cheese. Mac, the name's Joey. Ah, the talkative sort, are we? Well, we'll soon sort that out. That's a pretty nice instrument you got there. Mind if I have a look? Pay attention, you fat chump. I'm talking. That's your idea of intimidating? Quiet, will ya? Hey, do you feel... restless? Like you've got somewhere to go, but don't know where? It means you're dead, Mac. Can you even hear me? So... Nice night, huh? I'll be back, pal. Don't you worry. Hey, I'm talking, Buster! Hey! hey, hey. You let, let go. go! I need to ask you a few questions first. Not nah, nah, now, now, man. man. Can't, Can't you see I'm in the middle of something? something. Get, Get off, off the, the stage. stage! Stage? Ooh! That's, That's how, how we how treat we your kind at Johnny Ivory's. Johnny Ivory's? What are you talking about? Hello? Oh, we're dealing with a real sharp tack here. Hey, you got a minute? What is it now? Is Johnny Ivory a name? Never heard of a name like that. Dunno. There's always the phone book. Alright, let's get on with it. Yeah. Hey, I got something to say. Yeah, Joey? All right, let's get on with it. Yeah. Johnny Ivory's Jazz and Cabaret. It's on Bleecker and 7th Avenue. You up for some jazz, Joey? You mean we finally get to listen to some real music? Call it my special treat. We've already looked through this paper. We don't need any more leads. Yes, there is an entry for Russell Stone. Busy. I better go over there in person. Come on, let's get out of here. Right behind you. Say cheese. Hmm. This
This one looks interesting. That's him, the Jasmine Ghost from the Promenade. Looks like we're on the right track. Courtesy of Jambalaya Records. Hmm, might be worth checking out. The only thing holding up that dress is fate. Pretty girl, though. I wonder who she is. The woman is blocking the piano player. I can't see his face. Hey, mister. Yes? Got a minute? For a pretty thing like you, I got several. Huh. So what brings you here on such a sad night? I'm on a case. Is that right? Oh yes, very top secret. Sounds dangerous. Very. A guy could get into trouble hanging around a girl like you. And Lauren, what's your name? Pleasure is all mine, Lauren. You can call me C. C. You got it, sister. Is that C like the water? That's C like the cold. It's the first chord I played, and you never forget your first. Ain't that the truth? What's the band in that photograph behind you? That picture is old, sister. It's not that old. Old enough. Before my time is all. Do you have a copy of that photograph anywhere? Nope. Sorry. It's okay for me to talk to you like this. I don't hear anybody else complaining. A dull night, huh? You could say that. But I think it just got a bit more interesting. Is that right? Well, these lips don't lie. See you around. Anytime, sister. can't just take the sheet music. That would be rude. What do we have here? He's written something at the top of the sheet. Property of Cecil Sharp. Aw, how sweet. Maybe his mommy signed it for him. Jack. Lauren, I know you're there. I'm your brother. For God's sake, talk to me. Here we go. Jumbalaya Records. 240 Essex Street. I'll jot that down. Come on, let's get out of here. Right behind you. Cheese. Good evening. Good evening to you. I'm Dwayne. Lauren Blackwell. I was hoping you could help me. I'll do my best. What can I do for you? Does the name Cecil Sharp ring any bells? You know. That name does sound familiar, but uh, I'm so awful with names, you know. Is he part of a band? Maybe. He plays piano at Johnny Ivory's. Ah, uh, I deal with them all the time, but 
that's not where I heard the name. Hmm. This is going to bug me all night. Thanks for the help. I might be back later. No problem. Do you know this band? Oh yeah, I remember those guys. The C Sharps. That was the band's name? Yeah, I used to manage them. You used to manage them, but not anymore? Nah, been about eight, ten years. Time flies, you know. Cecil Sharp, the C Sharps. Cute, real cute. Hey, C. Hello there. Were you ever in a band called the C-Sharps? What makes you think that? Um, just the name. C-Sharp, Cecil Sharp. It's a pretty strong coincidence, wouldn't you say? Yeah, I guess. So what's your answer? No. I'm looking for info about a musician. Well, I'll try to help you out. Who is he? I don't know his name. I think he's a sax player. I know lots of sax players, sister. Big guy, kind of chubby, has a beard. Nope, doesn't ring a bell. You sure that you never played in a band called the C-Sharps? How many times do I have to tell you? Do you know any other musicians? I do run in those circles, yeah. Any of them play here? Sometimes we get major gigs here, but me? I'm what you call the dependable type. These fingers can go all night long. Can they now? Oh jeez, make him stop. See you around. Anytime, sister. He already knows about this photograph. It's right behind him. Hmm, this one looks interesting. Hi again. Hi yourself. Again. Was Cecil Sharp in the band the C-Sharps? Cecil Sharp. C-Sharps. Yes! I knew I heard the name from somewhere. So do you remember him now? Oh, yeah, he was the band leader. A genius on the piano. Thanks for the help. I might be back later. No problem. Hey, C. Hello there. I want to talk to you about the C-Sharps. I said- I know what you said. And I know that you're lying. So shut the hell up and listen. I spoke to your old manager. He confirmed who you are. You spoke to Dwayne? Yes, I did. That- Fine. You got me. Yes. I used to run a band called the C-Sharps. It was a rotten time in my life, and I'd just as soon forget it. Why are you stirring up these old ashes, huh? I have my reasons. Yeah, sure you do. About that sax player. Yeah? He's in that photo behind you. So I know he's with the C-Sharps and that you know him. Uh, what is this? You from that damn magazine? Magazine? The New Yorker. You a reporter? 
No. So who is he? You just don't quit, do you? You want to know so badly? His name is Isaac Brown. Isaac Brown? Yes. You happy now? Ecstatic. Great. See you later. Yeah. Yep, there's a listing for the New Yorker. Their main office is in Midtown. Thank you for calling the New Yorker. How can I help you? Hello, yes. I'm trying to reach a reporter named Mitchell. Let's see now. Mitchell, Mitchell. We have a Joseph Mitchell on staff, is that him? I guess it's worth a try. Is he in? Yes, he is. Hold, please. He's not answering. Maybe I should go up there in person. Come on, let's get out of here. Right behind you. Yes? Can I help you? Are you Mr. Mitchell? I sure am. I'm Lauren Blackwell. Well, do come in, Miss Blackwell. I was hoping that you could help me. Well, I'll do what I can. What is this regarding? Are you a reporter or...? Yes, yes, I am a reporter. From which publication? Uh... Say you freelance. I'm a freelancer. I see. So what can I do for you, Miss Blackwell? I'd like to talk about Isaac Brown. Ah, uh, Isaac. You knew Isaac? Sort of, yes. I'm looking into his death. Really? That was almost five years ago. Why the sudden interest? Let's just say that I have a personal interest in clearing it up. So tell me about yourself, Mr. Mitchell. I beg your pardon? Tell me about yourself. Yes, I heard you. I hope you didn't come here simply to interview me. I'm afraid I'd make a poor interview subject. Anything else you can tell me about Isaac? Why do you want to write about him? I don't want to go too in depth. Out of respect, you understand? Sure. I was drawn to him for the same reasons I'm drawn to anybody I write about. I felt he had a story that could reach people, enrich them, perhaps learn from. Really? Miss Blackwell, spend some time talking to the poor and the downtrodden. Walk down the Bowery and speak to the half-wits and the have-nots. In one hour, you'll learn more from them than you would from a lifetime of school. So what was Isaac's story? I know he played in a band called the C-Sharps, and then something obviously went wrong. What was it? Listen, have you tried asking Mr. Sharp? Yes. He's not talking. I don't blame him. He's probably feeling guilty. Guilty? Why? He has his reasons. Could you, uh, I don't know, tell me what those reasons are? I can't do that. Of course he can't. Mr. Mitchell, I need to know what happened. Listen, I don't like this. I don't feel comfortable talking about people without their consent. I won't say any more about Isaac or his sister. Sister? Sister? Uh, please, I'm not going to say any more. Who was Isaac's sister? I told you, not another word. I'd like to read your piece about Isaac. Ah, uh, well, I'm afraid I can't help you there. I never published it. You didn't? No, it seemed a bit in bad taste. Since when do reporters care about bad taste? I think that's all for now. Alright, you have a good night now.
Cecil. What? I need to speak to you about Isaac's sister. You? That's it! You've crossed the line, sister. It was fun for a while, but now it's time for you to leave. Ooh, now you've done it. Look, I'm sorry. Oh, you're sorry. Sorry and enough, sister. Leave. Okay, this is me leaving you alone. You really have a way with the fellas, kid. Ah, uh, don't sweat it. His bark is worse than his bite. I know that expression. Only time a man gets a look like that is when he's hung up over a woman. Go easy on him, huh? I think he cares more about that gal than he lets on. Oh, look. It's Miss Wonderful. Hello, Cecil. You loved her, didn't you? Of course I loved her. She was our heart and soul. I would've... Damn you, woman. Damn you. I just want to play this piano and forget she ever existed. Why don't you just leave me alone? So what happened, C? It's very important that you tell me. All right. All right. I don't know who you are or why you're so interested, but you're never going to leave me alone, are you? No, I won't. You were in a band together, right? Yeah, we had a band. Smart girl. Then she died. Then he died. End of story. How did you meet Isaac's sister? First of all, her name was Sarah. I was looking to start a band, and I saw them perform together. She could sing like... It was magic. Such energy. Such life. Such a waste. What happened to Sarah? She got sick. Pneumonia or something. Started coughing one day and wouldn't stop. She got better after a while, but something happened to her voice. Doctor said she would never sing again. After that, the spark just went out. She hung on for a few months, but she just lost the will to live. Anything else you can tell me about Sarah? I love that woman. Even when she lost her voice, I would have given up everything for her. Heck, I would have even let her brother live with us. I should have told her. About Sarah. I told you everything. Please, just stop. What was Isaac really like? That fat bastard. He was good on the sax, but that was the end of his good points. He drank, he was violent, he was useless in every other way. But Sarah could calm him down. She was the only one. If it wasn't for Sarah, I never would have kept him around. What happened to Isaac after Sarah died? He went to pieces. What do you think? Uh, he couldn't cope drank way too much, started fights during gigs. I tried to stick with him out of respect for Sarah, but let's face it, he was a big, dumb embarrassment. Who was the reporter? I don't know. Mitchell something? Slow talker. Drove me crazy. You think he killed Isaac? I just played the piano. I don't think anything. Especially not the past. Whoever did Isaac, the son of a bitch had it coming. So please, just get out of here. About Sarah. I told you everything. Please, just stop. So you cut ties with Isaac? Completely. Told him he was a drunk and a lowlife and wasn't worth the peanuts I paid him. Which was, let's face it, totally true. What happened? He beat me senseless is what happened. Knocked me out with the sacks I bought for him. Then he became a bum. Spent the rest of his life living on the streets of Roosevelt Island. Till he got killed by some drifter. You don't know who killed Isaac? Yes, I killed him. Oh, come on. No, I did. I'm not the one who put my hands around his neck or choked him to death, but I killed him just the same. You shouldn't be so hard on yourself. I know that. My brain knows that. But my heart won't listen. Can you tell me anything else about Isaac? No, I've told you everything. About Sarah? I told you everything. Please, just stop. About that reporter. I know nothing else about that man. Southern guy.
talked real slow, asked a bunch of questions. Just leave it, okay? See you later. Yeah. You know, all this talk reminds me of something. Sarah and Isaac would always play this song. Really? Yeah. A duet. At the end of every show. She'd sing and he'd play the saxophone? No, she'd actually play the piano, if you can believe it. She wasn't great, but she loved playing with Isaac. And Isaac loved that silly song. They never let me join them, but that was okay. It was kind of sweet, in a way. Oh, well. Cecil? What? What was the duet that Isaac and Sarah used to play? Oh, that. It was just a short little thing. Isaac would just improv the whole thing. But Sarah's was always the same. Went something like... After Sarah died, Isaac would play gigs, but refused to leave the stage. He'd blow on his sax playing anything that came to mind. Feet planted like a statue. He'd just keep playing? He'd play forever if I didn't get four guys to drag him off. I think... I think he was waiting for Sarah to play with him. He was supposed to finish each show with her and... Well... In his heart, he refused to believe she was dead. Could you play that song again? Yeah, sure. Why not? I think I've recorded enough. What am I supposed to do? Blow in his ear? He's not really my type. Oh boy, we've got company. Can you see? Pardon? Can't you see? See what, lady? The whole of the world. Connections, patterns, pulsing with life everywhere. Oh, great. One of New York's finest crazies. Do something about this old bat, will ya? Go away, will ya? Bother someone who cares. Fool! Liar! Can't you see? Um... Useless! Useless! Wow. I know. Only in New York. I'm Lauren Blackwell. What's your name? Joey, come here. Yeah, doll? At least we've got his name now. Isaac Brown. Does that name mean anything to you? Afraid not, sweetheart. Still, a name is something to go on. So Isaac Brown has a sister. Maybe this will be an easy night. Come on, let's hit the road. This place is Boresville Central. Joseph Mitchell certainly is interesting. Yeah, interesting. Did you notice his typewriter? No, what about it? There was dust on it, and the paper was blank. That thing hasn't seen much use in a long time. Maybe he uses a pen and paper. Hmm, maybe. That's it for now. Yeah, we'll talk more later.
I, sis, is that you, sis? I've been waiting for so long. No, Isaac, I'm not your sister. She couldn't come. No. No, she couldn't, could she? My sister's dead, isn't she? Yeah. Now I'm dead, too. Yeah. I knew that. Deep down, I knew that. I just couldn't let go. I'm sorry. Is that why you two are here? To help me let go? That's what we do best. I'm not sure what I'm supposed to do. Don't worry. Just leave everything to us. Here, just take this. Whatever you say. Hold on tight. This is the fun part. Hi, Isaac. Hey, this is it, huh? Yep, eternity, the white light, the passage into the next world. It is something, all right. I still can't believe I'm dead. Crazy old lady, she killed me. Old lady? Yeah, says she wanted to help me. Big girls and jokes. Why'd she want to go and do a thing like that? I'm sorry, I wish I knew. I don't think it matters anyway. It's time I join my sis. Just head into the light. Thanks, lady. You've been real kind. And uh, tell your friends sorry for the crack on the head. <laughs> right. Another day, another spirit gone to their rest. Hmm. Rest. Well, that's a nice word. Uh... Joey? Yeah, hi. Glad you're up. You! Did you... Did you save him? Yeah, yeah, sure, we saved him. Joey, is she talking to you? Yeah, go figure. Thank you, both of you. I only wanted to save them. Isaac told me he was killed by an old woman. Was that you? I save! Just like you! Who are you? I am the Countess. Countess? Countess of what? It's the only name I know. I saved them! I helped them! I... I'm sorry! Hey, get back here! Don't just stand there, let's get after her! She's pretty spry for an old lady. Spry my foot? You couldn't outrun a one-legged turtle with those lungs. Don't start with me, okay? Hey there. Nobody that old should move that fast. Just keep telling yourself that. Hmm. Joey, she could see you. How could she do that? I don't know. But I think this case just got a hell of a lot more complicated. Fantastic. Come on, let's get out of here. Right behind you. Well, this is it. Yep. All's quiet so far. The gate is locked. I can't get through. Alright, I'm going in to check it out. Stay close to the wall. Yeah, sure. Let me know what you find. Hello? Anyone here? Ah. Well, what do you see? Is it clean? I'm afraid not. Well, hurry up then. I feel stupid pressed up against this wall. Hey there! Huh? 
Could someone be there? Of course not. No one would be so rude as to enter without knocking. Hey, lady, I'm talking to you. No, the door is closed. Nobody is there. Only way in is if I open the door. And to do that, he'd have to knock. <sighs> I'll be back. Friggin' spooks. They want to fight? I'll give them one. Hello out there. Joey, what are you doing in there? I need you to do something. What? Knock on the gate door. Knock on the door? Why? I'll explain later. Just do it. A knock. Oh my! A visitor! Uh, just a minute! Is my hair okay? It'll have to do. Hello? Hello, miss. Hello? Can I help you? I'm Joey Malone, miss. Well, Mr. Malone, to what do I owe the pleasure? What's your name? Excuse me? Your name? My name is on the door. If you don't know who I am, then why are you here? I'm a bit lost. Can you tell me where I am? Sorry, I'm not sure what you mean. Are you looking for a specific apartment or... Apartment? You mean we're inside a building? Yes. Are you feeling all right, mister? You're not in a building, lady. Take a look around. I don't know what you're talking about. We're on the third floor. Look, Look, there's, there's the, the elevator, elevator down the hall. Ah, right, yeah, I see it. Are you sure you're feeling all right? I have something to tell you. Oh? There's no delicate way to put this. You're dead. Pardon me? Dead and buried. You're a ghost haunting a wasteland. You're unbalanced. Tell me what you want before I call the police. You're not in a building, lady. What are you talking about? We're on the ground. We're outside. You, sir, need glasses. Look at the door. It says D, clear as day. I'd like to ask you some questions. Look, I've had enough. I'm not going to stand here and indulge in idle chit-chat. Who are you? I was sent by your landlord. Oh, you were? Yep, he wanted me to ask you a few questions. Well, for your information, I don't have a landlord. I own this apartment. You're not fooling me. You're one of them, aren't you? One of them? Who is them? I told you all before, I am not leaving. The only way you can drag me out of here is as a corpse. Goodbye. This place is filthy. I can't take the sign. Boy, if I could touch it, that would sure be great. There's not much I can do with that except look at it. What do you want me to do, blow on it? I can't take the sign. It says Seagram Realty. I guess they're the guys who own this construction outfit. Let's take a look-see. This letter was written only a few weeks ago. This lady is upset because she's been stiffed five bucks a month. My guess is that she's not too happy with the foreman. Harriet Sherman. I have no idea who she is, but any lead is a good lead. The 
name under the picture is Farrah Fawcett. I wonder if she likes dead guys. So, is it all taken care of? Not yet, dear. Slacker. Hey, I got something to say. Yes? It's pretty quiet here. Yeah, I don't like it. I feel so exposed with all those windows staring at me. Anyone could look down and see me talking to you. So what? Worst that could happen is they think you're crazy. Great. I can't get a read on that lady ghost. She either wants to slap me or bake me cookies. You could use a good slap. Yeah, I'd rather have cookies. All right, let's get on with it. Yeah. Listing. They must be based out of town. Got her. There's a phone number, but no address. Sherman? Who is this? My name is Lauren Blackwell. What do you want? I'm calling from Seagram Realty. Oh, why didn't you say? You've got my $60. Um, yes, yes, I do. But before I give it to you, I have to ask you a couple of questions. Fine, fine, fine. Come on by and I'll answer whatever you want. 24 Rector, down in Battery Park City. Just buzz up. So, Joey. Yeah? Got any spare cash on you? Sorry, left my wallet in my other pants. Probably the pair I was buried in. It's my rainy day jar. I put some money in here whenever I think of it. It's a trick I learned from my mother. There's around $60 in here now. Hmm, the things I'll do for a case. Come on, let's get out of here. Right behind you. It's open! I'm back here in the kitchen! Harriet? Mrs. Sherman, if you don't mind. You from Seagram Realty? Yes. Have you got my money? I wanted to ask you a few questions first. You're welcome to ask me anything you'd like. After you give me the money. You got it? I sure do. It's about time. Give it here. Here you go. Hmm. It's all here. Sure enough. I'd say thanks if I hadn't had to fight tooth and nail to get it. What teeth, you old bat? Don't worry about it. Oh, I won't. Now, you wanted to ask me something? So tell me about yourself. Me? Why do you want to know? Your name came up during an investigation I'm working on. Investigation? Don't you work for Seagram Realty? Not exactly. Ah, you just use them as a way to get to me, huh? Yes. Is that a problem? Oh, not at all. Just don't expect your money back. She's all heart. What can you tell me about the construction site on 53rd Street? You've been there? How's the old place looking? It's a big hole in the ground. Ha! Can only be an improvement. I used to live there. Then Seagram Realty bought it and tore it down. Going to build something new and fancy, no doubt. 
They kicked you out of your own home? No big loss. The place was a dump. Plus, they wanted it so badly that they paid most of us a monthly stipend just to leave. Pretty generous, actually. I can almost forgive them for nearly robbing me. So they paid you money to leave? Yep. Like I said, it was a pretty generous deal. Building was about to be condemned anyway, so everyone was grateful for the offer. Well, everyone except for Mavis Wilcox. Who is Mavis Wilcox? A lunatic is what she was. She lived down the hall from me, so I know how crazy she was. Why was she crazy? She refused to leave is why. Seagram was offering her a fortune, but still she refused. Why did Mavis refuse to leave? She was a lunatic. I believe I already established this. A total shut-in. The prospect of leaving her little apartment terrified her. I'm old and feeble. If I could manage the move, she could have. Of course, it doesn't matter now. Did they ever get Mavis to leave? Oh, you could say that. Yes, you could definitely say that. She left all right. Left the entire world, in fact. You mean she died? Yes. Someone broke in and choked her to death. Right in the apartment she loved so much. I'd call it ironic if it weren't so tragic. Did they ever find out who killed Mavis? No. Some street kid, most likely. Thought the building was empty and went in to steal whatever was left over. Didn't count on anyone being there. Bumped into Mavis, then had to kill her. Happens all the time. How well did you know Mavis? Like I said, I lived just down the hall from her, on the third floor. I didn't know her well, but she did get some mail just before they smashed the place up. I took it, just in case her relative or something came looking. But it's been six months, and nothing. Anything else you can tell me about Mavis? Just that she lived on the third floor with me. There's nothing else. Do you know anything about a strange old woman wandering the streets? Hmm, funny you mention that. Really? I once saw a strange old woman wandering the hallway back in the old building. I yelled at her to leave, and she did. I doubt that she was the one you're looking for, though. The world is full of strange old ladies, not unlike myself. Can you tell me anything else about your old building? Good riddance is what I say. I lived on the third floor. Everyone on the street could see me. I like my new place much better. Anything else you can tell me about Mavis? Just that she lived on the third floor with me. There's nothing else. Do you still have Mavis' things? Yes, I do such as they are. There wasn't much, just that envelope on the counter. Could I look at it? You knew Mavis? Sort of, yes. Well, you might as well take a look at them. Nobody else has come looking. Thanks. Goodbye, Mrs. Sherman. Don't mention it. There's not much in here, just a photograph and a letter. That's her. That's the ghost at the construction site. So our ghost's name is Mavis Wilcox. I'd bet the farm on it. This kid doesn't look too happy to be with Mavis. He's wearing a Columbia University sweatshirt. That's her. Definitely the lady at the site.
Come on, let's get out of here. Right behind you. Yes? Twice in one evening? Come on in, sit down. Did you know Mavis Wilcox? Miss Wilcox? Yes, I remember her. Lived uptown a ways before she died. How did you know her? I wanted to write a piece about her, so I met her for a spell. Interesting woman. How did you know her? I'm looking into her death. I see. So what can you tell me about Mavis? I get the impression she didn't get out much. That's an understatement. I got in touch with her through a colleague who was covering that demolition. I wondered what made a woman like that tick, so I made an appointment to meet with her. What was she like? A very gracious woman. Brought me in, made me a cup of tea, showed me pictures of a family. All in all, it was a pleasant way to spend an afternoon. What happened to her? Killed, so they say was found choked to death in her own apartment. Any thoughts on who did it? Well, there were rumors that the labor union decided to take matters into their own hands, as it were, but I doubt that. The police ruled it was some squatter or drifter or something, and left it at that. And what do you think? Me? I have no theory. Why did you want to write about her? I found her fascinating. She was asked to leave. She was begged to leave. She was even offered lots of money to leave. But she kept refusing. She was too scared. I had to know why. And what did you discover? That, Miss Blackwell, is the eternal question. I've spoken to hundreds of people over the years. Most of them were odder than Mavis. It's impossible to decipher the whys and the hows. As time went on, I've contented myself just with the what's. Anything else you can tell me about Mavis? I'm afraid I've told you everything. Do you know anything about a strange old woman wandering the streets? I've met plenty of strange old women, Miss Blackwell. Some stranger than others. Can you give me some more details? She calls herself the Countess. Mr. Mitchell? I'm thinking. No. I can safely say I've never set eyes on this woman. I'm sorry. I'd like to read your piece about Mavis. I'm afraid I no longer have it. Do you know what issue it was in? I'd like to look it up. I never published it. I was going to, but then Mavis died and it just seemed wrong somehow. I don't even have the rough copies anymore. I'm sorry. I think that's all for now. Alright. You have a good night now. I'm going in again. You know what to do. Yeah, yeah. I'll wait here. My home. Where, Where else, else can, can I, go? I go? She looks middle-aged, but it's hard to tell in her current state. Like most ghosts, she doesn't seem to be aware of her surroundings. They want to fight? fight? I'll, I'll give, give them, them one. one. Hey, kid! Knock on the gate again! Another visitor! Oh, uh, you again. I'd like to ask you some questions. Look! I've had enough! I'm not going to stand here and indulge in idle chit-chat. Who are you? It's me. Your son. Sam? Yep, that's me. Sam! It's been so long. Look at you! Yeah, look at me! Sorry, I was so rude. I almost didn't recognize you. Come on in, Sam. I'll make you dinner. Ah, uh, no, I, I can only stay for a minute. I have some questions I need to ask you. Of course, Sam. So, Mom, how's it going? Oh, you know me, Sam. It's tough living here on my own. But I get by. Yeah, I can see that. Listen, Mom, I need you to think very carefully. What's the last thing you remember? 
What do you mean? Answering the door and seeing you, of course. And before that? Nothing. You know nobody comes here. Except for the grocer, sometimes. And that... That who? Nobody. So, Mom, how are my brothers and or sisters? That's not funny, Sam. You know you're an only child. Right, just checking. How's Dad, Mom? Oh, Sam, you know that your father is dead? John Durkin died years ago. Ah, right. Sorry. Mom, look around carefully. Are you sure that you're at home? You're so confusing, Sam. Look at the door. It says D, clear as day. I'm going to go now, Mom. I'll come back to visit you soon. Sure, Sam. I'll be here. Trying to get rid of me, will they? So how's your new friend? Oh, just dandy. If John Durkin was Sam's father, it's only logical that Sam's last name would be Durkin. I'll leave that where it is. There's no entry for that. Hmm, there's no listing. I thought for sure that would work. Columbia University. Here's the number. speaking. How may I direct your call? How about Sam Durkin? Is there a Sam Durkin listed? Sam Durkin, yes. Hold, please. It's about time. Durkin. Is this Sam? Yeah. Who's this? My name is Lauren Blackwell. I was hoping to ask you a few questions about your mother. Oh. Questions, huh? Yeah. All right. I'll bite. How do you know my mom? I was her neighbor. You used to live in that dump? Yeah. And you knew Mavis? Very well. You actually talked to her? Yeah, all the time. Where, in the hallway? Why all the questions? Because I don't believe you. Whether you believe me or not, it can't hurt to talk to me. Maybe. Maybe not. But if you knew her, you know what apartment number she was in. I would? Sure you would. She never left the damn place. So what was it? All right, so maybe you did know her. Thank you. So what do you want to know about her? What do you know about her death? It was suicide. She killed herself? Not literally, but it was like she chose to die. She had every opportunity to leave. They were going to pay her and find her a new place and everything. I tried to get her out, but that's my mom. She couldn't be dragged out of that dump by anybody or anything. Do you know who killed her? She was killed by some junkie, wasn't she? So they say. You think different? That's what I'm trying to find out. Well, good luck to you. How close were you with your mother? Close? Think of the farthest place you can and add another 10,000 miles. That's how close we were. Woman wasn't a mother, just crazy on wheels. Did Mavis ever leave her apartment? Never. Not once in the last 15 years. You don't seem upset by her death. Upset? 
Sure, she was my mom. But am I gonna lose sleep? No. She drove my pop out of the house and into an early grave. I once thought I'd follow in his footsteps, but not anymore. The woman didn't go anywhere. Never did anything. She was killing me just by existing. Now I feel like I can breathe again. That's the truth. What was it like living with her? You kidding? I lived with my pop. After three years of marriage, he had enough. Glad he had the sense to take me with him. And after your father died? I got by. You never visited your mother? Yeah, I visited her on Mother's Day, if that's what you want to know. Even got her a present once. Really? Yeah, for all the good it did. What did you give your mom for Mother's Day? I don't think that's any of your business, lady. It's been years. Just dust in the ground now. Bye, Sam. Thanks for your time. Yeah. Come on, let's get out of here. Right behind you. Yes? I'm becoming Don Rat popular. Come in, have a seat. Did Mavis ever mention a gift or present from her son? Now that you mention it, yes. She showed me a leather-bound edition of Alice in Wonderland and said it was from her son. Alice in Wonderland? Yes, by Lewis Carroll. Yeah, I've heard of it. What was that present Mavis got from her son? It was a leather-bound copy of Alice in Wonderland. Do you know anything about Sam, Mavis' son? I'm afraid not. Mavis discussed her son and seemed proud of him, but I don't think they see each other. I've never met the boy myself. Do you know anything about John Durkin, Mavis's ex-husband? Oh yeah, she did talk about him. Broke her heart, she said. I know they divorced very early in the marriage and he died several years later, but I'm afraid I know nothing else. I think that's all for now. All right, you have a good night now. I'm going in again. You know what to do. Yeah, yeah. I'll wait here. Did I leave the gas on? Where else can I go? Hey, kid. Knock on the gate again. My. I'm popular today. Oh, hello, Sam. Hi. Mom? Hey, Mom. Do you have that present I gave you? Which, Which present, present was that? that? The book. Alice in Wonderland. Of course I still have it. It was the only Mother's Day gift you ever bought me, Sam. Can I see it? Whatever for. Come on, Ma. I just want to see it. Sure, Sam. It's right on the table. Great. Uh, why don't you bring it out here? You mean, pick it up? Yeah, pick it up and bring it over. Pick it up. Sure, I can pick it up. Oh! Oh, no! What? The book! It's gone! Gone, huh? Imagine that. Somebody stole it! Sam, I'm sorry. I'm so, so sorry. You can't pick up the book because it's not there. Sam? The book's not there, and neither is the table, right? What? Think! The book's gone, the table's gone, the whole room is gone. Sam, you're awful! I'm upset and I'm sorry. Don't make it worse, please! It's okay, Mom. Okay? Okay? 
I lost your gift! You need to find that book, Mom. I don't know if I can love a mother who loses my gifts. You don't mean that! I mean it, Mom. You need to tell me where the book is. But... I don't know where to look! Maybe it's out here, Mom. In the hallway? Sure, in the hallway. Yeah, I'm sure it's out here. Come on out and help me look. Oh, okay, okay Sam. Sam. But, but only, only for you. you. I, I, I still, still don't, don't see, see it anywhere. anywhere. Let's try further down, Mom. I'm, I'm, I'm outside. outside. Yeah. I knew you could do it, Mom. Mom? Sam? Sam, Sam where, where are, are we? we? I'm, I'm scared. scared. I'm right here. Mom, I need you to do something. What? Turn around. I can't. Sure you can. Just turn around and look behind you. Oh, where's the building? Where's my apartment? Where's my home? It's gone! Those bastards, they tore it down! You... You made me leave, and they tore it down! Hey, calm down. I've got nothing now. Mom. I am not your mother. You are not my son. My son hates me. All I had left was my home, and then... Then I... Oh, God. Are you happy now? You couldn't just leave me there. You had to bring me out. You had to make me remember. I'm sorry. It's horrible. Being dead, it's horrible. You get used to it. I... I don't want to feel like this anymore. Everything is so dark and cold. Can I go home now? Sure. Sure, I can take you home. Just hold on to this. Over to you, kid. Right. It's so bright and big. It just goes on forever. I just want to go home. Please, can I go home? I think that's the only home you've got now. I'm sorry. What a legacy. Husband gone and dead. My son hates my guts. My home is gone. My life, over. I remember that too. Dying, I mean. That old woman choking me. Old woman? She just came in and killed me. She said she was going to help me. Uh, well, what now? The light, Mavis. Just head towards it. And then? I don't know. I'm scared, but it feels right somehow. Oh, John, Sam, I'm so sorry for everything. I wish I could feel sorry for you. But I don't feel much of anything anymore. Best of luck, wherever you are. You alright? Yeah, fine. I'm exhausted. Call it a night? Sounds good to me. You? Like clockwork. You saved her! Yeah, sure we did. No thanks to you. We've got some questions for you, lady. Why did you kill Isaac and Mavis? I didn't kill them! I'm like you! You're nothing like us. We don't kill. I help spirits into the next world! Like you! You mean... you're a medium? Yes! But you can't be. I am like you! Wait, no. This doesn't make any sense. Why are you killing people? I save people! I don't hurt them! Get back here! Stupid old hag! Let's get after her. God damn it! Your nose okay? That lamppost should not have been there.
feeling better? I'm so confused, Joey. I feel like the answer is on the tip of my tongue. I just can't figure it out. Well, let's chat for a while. Brainstorm a bit. Maybe we'll come up with something. She's a medium like me. It makes no sense. It does make sense, actually. She's not an animal or another ghost. The only way she could see me is if she was a medium like you. Why would a medium kill? Maybe she doesn't think of it as killing. She did say she helped people, saved them. By killing them? Maybe she felt they were better off dead? I don't think so. Mavis and Isaac were sad mixed up people, but they didn't deserve to die. Maybe she thinks otherwise. Is she my future? What do you mean? That woman, the Countess, or whatever she's called. Is that what happens to mediums when they get old? I... I don't know, darling. I really don't. But I won't let that happen to you. You have my word on that. If she's a medium, where is her spirit guide? You know, I wondered that myself. I'm your connection to the spirit world. The Countess, or whoever she is, doesn't have that. Or at least none that we can see. Is it possible to be a medium without a guide? I don't think so, sweetheart. That's one thing I'm sure of. Medium and guide, that's how it works. What could have happened to her spirit guide? I don't know. I thought you couldn't leave my side. I know. Either her spirit guide managed to escape, or... Or what? Or it was killed. Is that possible? I don't know. I don't think I want to know. So what could her connection be? Dunno. Something has to connect her to the spirit world. It's not another ghost or we would see it. So it must be something else. Something that has a connection to everything we've seen. Or someone. Yeah, that's it. The Countess connects these two cases. There has to be something or someone else that has the same connection. Joseph Mitchell? Bingo! The reporter? How could he have this kind of power? I don't know how he got the power, but it all fits. He wrote about both Mavis and Isaac, and the Countess killed both of them. He seems like the best candidate. But it doesn't make any sense. Think about it. You're a medium. What is it that mediums do? We help spirits into the next world. Exactly. A medium needs a guide. Hers is gone. Somehow Mitchell fills in the gap. Our Countess is being told, through Mitchell's writing, to help certain spirits into the next world. It's not her fault they're still alive. You mean... I think you get the picture. Oh god, that's sick. It makes sense, though. How is this possible? There's only one way to find out. It's time we paid our friend Mitchell one more visit. Come on, let's get out of here. Right behind you. Yes? Miss Blackwell. Hello again, Mr. Mitchell. I was just about to head home. Oh, I'll just be a second. Well, if you insist, do have a seat. Thanks, but I'd rather stand. Go on, let him have it. Mind if I smoke? Well, actually... Thanks. Miss Blackwell, my patience is wearing thin. My family is waiting for me. Tell me what you want. You finished your writing for the day, Mr. Mitchell? Yes. Yes, I have. And now I'm going home. He's full of hot air. The page is blank. You haven't written anything today, have you? Why do you say that? The paper is blank. What? How do you know that? I have exceptional eyesight. There's dust. Don't forget the dust. And there's dust on the typewriter. Well, can't contradict you there. So? So, I don't think that's any of your business, Miss Blackwell. Now, if you'll excuse me. Mr. Mitchell, two people are dead. So I gathered. You wrote about both of them. Yes, I did. You don't find anything suspicious about that. I've written about hundreds of people over 30 years. The fact that two of them happen to be dead does not surprise me. It's just a coincidence. Funny thing about my life, Mr. Mitchell, 
If something looks like a coincidence, it normally isn't. Well, I hate to disappoint you. Ooh, look at the sweat on this guy's brow. If he ain't lying, I'm dying. So to speak. You aren't a very good liar. And you are poking your nose into things you don't understand. You'd be surprised at what I understand, Mr. Mitchell. Try me. Who are you, anyway? You come in, out of the blue, and bring up all this. All of what? I don't know. I... I honestly don't know. I write about people and they die. Can you understand that, can you? My whole life I've been driven to write about people. Now I kill them instead. You've done nothing wrong. There's a woman called the Countess. She kills whoever you write about. A Countess? Killing people that I write about. That's a tall story. And that's a lot to take in. Why would she do something like that? How did this happen? Probably because of your connection to humanity. I don't know. You said probably. So you're not sure? Not as such, no. Well then. I appreciate you trying, but I prefer if you left well enough alone. Don't you want to write again? Oh yes. But people are safe as long as they don't write about anything real. I've always wanted to try handed fiction. Had a story in my head for years. I'll probably give it a whirl, see how it goes. But no more deaths. Not on my watch. Don't you want to help? There's a killer out there. Who only kills people I write about. So I stop writing about people. Problem solved. Why is this happening? I think it's a penance of some kind. I've shared the intimate details of people's lives with the world. Perhaps I revealed one secret too many. I don't think about it anymore. I just come to work like nothing's wrong. Everyone's been very polite so far, but I'm sure the ball will drop someday. I'm trying to help you. And I never asked for it. People die when I write. So, I don't write. The problem's solved. I can't leave it alone, Mr. Mitchell. Oh, rest assured you can. You seem like a capable young lady, and I'm sure you think you know what's what. But I don't want any more deaths on my conscience. You're not a murderer, Mr. Mitchell. No, I'm not. Five years back, I tried to write about a man. An old man in a bar. He was killed the next day, choked to death. I didn't think anything of it at the time. Then I wrote about another man, Mr. Isaac Brown. You know him. He died the same way. Still figured it was just a coincidence. But then it happened with Mavis Wilcox. For the third time in a row. No, I didn't kill them. Not on purpose. But if I wrote a fourth time, that would be murder. Plain and simple. If you won't help me, I'll have to go to the police. Oh? And tell them what? All those deaths? All killed the same way? So soon after you met them? I'm sure they'd be interested in that information. Is that right? Well, I'd be careful if I were you. Careful? I'm not without defenses, if you know what I mean. Is that a threat? Are you threatening to write about me? I didn't say anything. You know what? Go right ahead. What do you mean? You want to write so bad? Write about me. Dust off that typewriter and get to work. Knock yourself out. Listen, I spoke out of turn. I didn't honestly mean... Hell with that. Just do it. Hey, this is dangerous. I know what I'm doing. I can't do it. Like hell you can't. You've been writing for how long? 30 years? More? I know you can do it. I want to meet this thing head on. It's the only way. Do it. You don't know what you're asking. What's the worst that could happen? You could die. Oh. Is that all? But... Quiet. Right. I was born in Troy, upstate New York. My mother's name was Patricia. My father... You getting this stuff down? Well, I hope you're happy. I'm never happy. Hey. We're supposed to be a team. 
You can't make this kind of decision without asking me first. Button it, Joey. If this bra's a medium like me, then I have some questions for her. If I'm gonna end up like that, I wanna know. And if she kills you for your trouble? Well, then I won't have to worry. And what happens to me, huh? You die, what the heck happens to me? You'll move on to whoever's next. That's how it works, doesn't it? It's not about that. Maybe you'll end up with my baby brother. I'm sure you guys will get along great. Yeah, great. When do you think she'll get here? I don't know. I feel her coming, though. She knows who I am. How can you feel that? I just do. She was right. She's like me. Maybe mediums call out to each other. So, any thought on how to handle her? Nope, not a one. I just want to talk to her. Well, she can see and hear me, so I can help. You're not alone. Yeah. You understand? You're not alone. I'm tired, Joey. I'm so tired. All right. I'll just leave you to it. Yeah. She's here. So polite of her to knock. I... I know you. Yes, you know me. Come in. I'm watching you. So... What's your story? I want to help you. Help me, huh? You're in pain? Lost? I can help. Who are you? I am the Countess. Do you have a guide? The spirit guide? I still feel her. She is gone, but not completely gone. What do you mean? Kid, her mind is snapped. She's not gonna- Yes. She snapped my mind. She went away, and my world expanded. I see everything. Everything! It hurts! You're bonded with Joseph Mitchell. Is that his name? The guide who is not a guide? Yes. The non-guide. He speaks to the world. He spoke to me. He tells me what to do. Oh, he is so often silent. It's been years since I heard his voice. But tonight, I heard him. He told me to help you. He didn't tell you that. Why else would I be here? I... I'm here to help you. You're here to kill me. No! I don't kill! I will set you free! Hey, watch it, lady. Who was your spirit guide? She had a name. I no longer know. I wish I knew. I cannot think. Not without her. Why did she leave? Why? Where is your spirit guide now? I don't know. Her voice is gone. I'm lost. I found that other voice. But he is so quiet. You mean Mitchell? The true guide. She is gone. Gone. How did she go away? I don't know. She found a way. Why did she do that? Were you like me before your spirit guide went away? Like you? You know, sane. Joey. I was happy. I was smaller. Saw the world in muted colors. And there was music. Sweet music. We helped people. It felt good. Now she is gone. Now I help people, but it feels bad. Will I become like you? Please tell me. That's all I want to know. You? You are loved. Loved? Loved by who? You are in pain, my child. Let me help you. I'd like to help you instead. Help me? I need no help. You need to be free. Hey. Hey! Let her go, you old witch! Damn it! I can't do anything! Fight her! Lauren, fight back! Fight back, damn you! Alright, that's what happens when you mess with us. Stay away from her. No, she needs my help! 
Hey, you want to help someone? Why don't you help me? You want to free a spirit? Well, I'm the real McCoy. You? Yeah, that's right. Come and save me. I'm right here. I... Wait. I'm supposed to help her. Oh, my head. I'm waiting. I'll save you. I'm in pain. What are you going to do about it? I can help you. You're past your prime. I don't think you can handle it. You. Come on, then. Make with the saving. You need me? Come on. Take me to the place with the bright light. I can help you. Well, come on. What are you waiting for? I... I want to help you. Why won't you let me help you? Uh, jo Joey? I'm sorry. can't look, is she? Yeah. There's no... No ghost. She's gone. Gone. I killed her. It was either her or you, darling. You made the right choice. Did I? What if, what if that's me one day, huh? What if I'm old and confused and alone? You won't be alone. I'll make sure of that. You say that now. But look at her. Her guide was gone. I can't speak for the future, kid. Maybe someday we'll meet someone like her, and then maybe we'll find out more. But right here, right now, I'm here, and I'm staying put. That's something, isn't it? Isn't it? Yeah, it's something. This is a bad idea. You don't need to do this. Hello? Hi. Jack? Lauren. Sis, is that you? Yeah, Jack. It's me. Where have you been? It's not important. I miss you. Tell me about your life, Jack. How's Maria? When's the wedding? This is a really bad idea. <laughs> <laughs>